Hello and welcome to part 5 of my video series, Tactics in the Jabawa Land System, you should know. The game I want to present you today is a pretty interesting game and was played between Golubov and Pogosian at the Rapid World Chess Championship matches at St. Petersburg in 2018. What I find interesting about the game is that why it doesn't only show you one plan you could use for your own games, no, he shows you two plans. Plan number one is a plan that you will often use yourself against early bishop f5 lines by black. And you really have to know this uh, by heart because I would say that if you're a Jababa London system player, um, roughly 20% of your games will be within this line. And plan number two is a pretty nice illustration of what white could do if black just suddenly castles queenside. You know, in many games in the Jababa London system, white just simply prepares a kingside attack. But what can you do if black just suddenly says, nope, I'm not going kingside, I will castle queenside. And yeah, this game is a nice illustration that shows you that you still have attacking chances against black king. And that's why I like the game so much. You can see the critical position already on the board. It's white move and win right spot. But take your time before we just jump right into the tactic. I of course want to show you how to reach the position. So without further ado, it's time to checkmate. <laughs> So the game started with the moves d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5, bishop f4, and here black decided to play the move bishop f5. And this is an absolute logical move because black will at a certain point play the move e6, and by playing bishop f5, well, the bishop is outside of the pawn chain and so it is an active piece. But the move has some downsides as well, and our main plan as white is to play f3 with the plan of pushing g4, h4 and using the bishop on f5 as a target to gain a little bit more space on the king's side. I just want briefly to mention that in this position some black players like to delay the bishop f5 move and play instead the move c6. Here you should just simply play a move like e3 and after bishop f5 you then will play f3 with the same plan I will show you soon enough in our game. You know. So, in our game, black played the move e6 after our f3, and here we would just simply push g4, and after the bishop retreats to g6, we push h4. As you can see, we already got a little bit space on the king's side, but okay, you, can, you could also argue, well, our king is a little bit weakened, so if he would castle king's side, well, this could also backfire, so it's a plus and a minus at the same time, you know. Uh, right now, black has to do something about the bishop because um, white is threatening h5, winning the bishop on g6. So he has two options, you could play h6 or h5. In the game, black decided to play the move h6 and this is by far the most common move in this position. White just simply played e3 and he now has plans of bringing the bishop to d3 to exchange the bishop on g6. And what White really would love to do is to exchange the bishop right on g6 square, but a good opponent wouldn't allow you this and instead just pick up the bishop on d3 himself. You know, because if we would be able to uh, capture the bishop on g6, then black would have to take him back with the f pawn and this would pretty much weaken his pawn structure. But anyway, in the game, um, black played the move a6. And whenever you see the move a6, you know, okay, my opponent is planning moves like c5. Because by playing a6, um, black just simply guards himself against bishop b5 and bishop c7 threats, you know. So if you want to know more about this variation, just so check out the first video I did about the Jababalan system. But um, it's absolutely understandable that black um, wants to restrict our knight, and so a6 is a good move and it prepares um, c5 at the same moment. So here, white just simply stick to the plan and play the move bishop to d3. 
um, trying to exchange the light square bishops and white just simply captured the uh, bishop and now white has to make a decision white could take the bishop with the pawn or with the queen whenever black played a move like a6 and his pawn is still on c7 I would advise you to capture back with the c-pawn because if you think about the position carefully then try to find a good plan for black. I really cannot find a plan for black that doesn't involve the move c5 and because this will appear pretty quickly I would really advise you to capture back with the pawn so that you can grab just simply the c5 pawn back and then push d4. There are positions um, where you have to take with the queen because let's say he did not push a6 and his pawn probably is on c6. Yeah, you know I showed you earlier a line where um, black just uh, delayed the variation a little bit and this is when he could play c6 in the fourth move. Well then it's probably always a good idea to take it back with the queen because black will need some more time to prepare c5 because he cannot push it because then your knight couldn't come to b5 you know it's a little bit um, probably a little bit confusing at the first point but just keep in mind uh, in positions where black played the move a6 and the pawn is still on c7 it's pretty clear that black wants to push c5 so it's better to take back with the pawn and if the pawn is back on um, a7 and 7 and instead the pawn is on c6 well then it's most likely better to take it with the queen okay so keep this as a rule of thumb so in the game um white took with the pawn and i just want to show you briefly why it's not so good to take with the queen because after c5 you really got some trouble you know you don't want to grab the pawn because then he can develop peace and at a certain point he will push e5 and your center will collapse but at the same time you cannot not take the pawn because he's threatening moves like um, c4 and then your queen has to move back and well it's suddenly black who could start a queenside attack and yeah this is um, also nothing you really would like to see so yeah we are taking back with the pawn in the game black decided to play the move bishop d6 I just want to show you after c5 well you just simply grab the pawn and after bishop takes c5 from d4 i think this position is absolutely okay for white you mainly will um, put your king to f2 develop the knight to e2 and then you would try to figure out if you could start an attack on the king side with a move like g5 anyway in the game black decided to play the move bishop to d6 instead of c5 and here we just simply play the move knight g to e2 protecting the bishop on f4. Black played a move knight to c6 and white played a common move in this variation he played the move king to f2. Just keep in mind that when in all these lines where black played an early bishop f5 and you played f3 g4 h4 is most of the time the best square for the king. f2 is the place you have to go with the king. There are variations where you want to cast the queen side but I would say in 99% you really don't want to cast a short because this could really backfire. So you want to place a king on f2 so that if you will push g5 at a certain point and the lines open you still have a rook on the edge file. So this is why you put your king on f2. And it's still quite safe on the square. Even if it looks probably a little bit um, dull at the first moment. Anyway in this position black played the move queen to d7 and this is the first indicate that black has no idea of castling um, kingside but instead wants to castle queenside. I mean it's understandable. Um, let's say black would castle kingside where well, you really can see that a move like g5 will open up the position and black could get in some kind of trouble you know. So with knowing that it's probably an idea for black to go queenside a best move in this position is rook to c1. Placing the rook on the semi open c file, um, this looks like a good idea. And here, black really castle queenside. I just want to show you that after castling, a good move for white would be to take the bishop on d6, and after queen takes d6, knight g3. You still have uh, time left to play the move like g5, opening up the position, and yeah, bringing uh, more of the major pieces to the g and h file, and just simply try to attack uh, black's king on the king side. You also have plans of probably 
we would the knight to c5 or even to f4 to join the attack, you know? Okay. Anyway, in our game, black played the move castle and queenside. And now it's time for white to think about a plan. Up to this point, white really just wanted to push uh, g5 at a certain point, opening up the h file just to simply attack black's king. But all of a sudden, black's king isn't on the king side, but he's on the queen side. So this really isn't a move we should uh, consider right now because this would only weaken our own king. Because now it would be black who would um, profit from the open h file. So what could be a good plan in this position for white? Well, a good plan would be to play moves like queen to b3. Knight to a4, knight to um, c5, and there's probably even the option of sacrificing a rook on c6 and bringing the other rook to c1. So this is the plan um, white should keep in mind in this position, and here it's how it worked out in practice. White started with the move knight to a4, just with the idea of placing the knight to c5 and gaining a nice outpost. And here black already played a slight mistake, he played the move king to b8. I mean it's an understandable move and it occurs pretty often in games that when you castle queenside you will um, take another move for your king just to bring it more into the corner. And in this position it's even more understandable because our rook is already lined up against black king and by playing um, king to b8, well he just steps aside. But the funny thing about the position is that I believe that queen to e7 would have been the better move and the move has some proposals in mind. Um, reason number one why this move is good is it makes room for the knight to come to d7 and probably defend against c5 or just um, jumping to g6, uh, b6 and giving the black king shelter, you know. Uh, another, uh, another reason why this move is good is if the queen side really breaks down, then black has the option of some just simply run with the king to the king side. I know it may sound stupid, but it is really something you should consider. <laughs> and the last thing why I think this move is good is because at a certain point this knight will move. Let's say to e8 or to d7, doesn't matter. But with the queen on e7, you're already threatening to take on h4 just in case uh, our Knight, our rook would move away, for example, let's say uh, stuff like this, you know. Um, so white needs to be a little bit careful about the h4 pawn and perpetual checks, you know. So yeah, this is why I believe queen to e7 would be best. And I just want to show you one example line in this position. And this is rook takes c6. Because after b takes c6, queen to b3, it's already a little bit unpleasant for black because we're threatening rook to c1, attacking the c-pawn, and so what could black do in this position? Well, the best move is actually king to d7, but after queen to b7, it's already pretty tough for black. I mean, for example, rook to b8 just loses immediately the game because we have the nice move um, knight to b6 check. And black cannot retreat because of the, uh, retake because of the uh, pin. So black has to play the move like king to e8. And after we just simply capture the rook and trade queens, we just simply could retreat with our knight. And I mean, come on, we're up a whole piece. So this is uh, just simply game over and white is winning. So black cannot play a move like rook to b8, but instead really has to play king to e8, just simply running over to the king's side. And I mean, come on. Three moves ago, you just castle queen side just to run now to the king side. You know, it, it looks a little bit dumb, right? But okay, on the other hand, right now he's up in exchange, but after moves like queen to a6, bishop takes f4, um, queen takes c6 check, queen to d7, queen exchange, and knight takes f4, we reach a position where I think that it is about equal. I mean, white got a knight and two pawns for a rook. And, well, I think both sides have, have winning chances, but I actually would really prefer white. I mean, black still got some problems with king. Um, I mean, not with king, but um, with the rook that is still stuck on h8. So he has to play moves like rook to e7, bring this rook into the game, bring this rook into the game. And, well, 
I think the position is actually totally fine for white. I mean, you could just simply play a move like b3, for example, and then the queen side is just uh, solid. And it's not so easy for black to break down uh, the king side. So, yeah, I mean, uh, white could follow up with moves like rook to c1. And I think it's an interesting position where both sides, of course, can still win. But my preference would be the white side. But anyway, it's probably roughly equal. So yeah, let's go back to the game. In the game, white played the move king to b8, and that, oops, oops, sorry, king to b8. And as I already told you, it's an absolute understandable move to uh, gain out of the open C, half open c file. But yeah, it's already a slight mistake. And here, black plays the move knight to c5, um, placing the knight on c5, gaining a nice outpost. And after moves like queen to b3, there are already mating threats or um, threats like um, knight takes a6 check. Here black decided to capture the knight on c5 because it's just simply too strong and white just recaptures with the rook. And this gives now white the option of playing again moves like queen to b3 and rook to c1 and then he always will have potential rook sacrifices on c6. <coughs> Here black played another slight mistake, he played the move rook h3 8. It's understandable that he wants to centralize his rooks but actually this is a mistake. A better move for him would have been h5 and after g5 knight to e8 because if he will bring the knight to d6 well then the knight is a pretty pretty strong defender and it isn't that easy for white to break through because the knight on d6 just simply protects um, the b7 pawn and at the same time it blocks the um, line of the black dark square bishop by white so knight e8 is a multi-proposed move that uh, would probably save the day for black. Anyway, in the game, black played the move rook h to e8, and well, it's an understandable move, but now the e8 square is blocked for the knight, and also is the d7 square blocked for the knight, so the knight cannot support black's king uh, defending, you know. Here, white just simply stick to the plan and play the move queen to b3, and here, black played the move e5, opening up the center, and yeah, this was his idea by placing the rook to e8. Oops, sorry. But white just simply captures the pawn, and after knight takes e5, he just simply stick to the plan and play the move rook h to c1. And now we are threatening to take on h uh, on c7. So black has to do something about it, and he plays the move rook to c8. And here white plays the move knight to d4. Um, I really get the feeling that by playing e5, black just helped white, you know? I mean, we got rid of the d5 um, pawn just to place our knight to d4, which now is a pretty, pretty strong piece, you know. Um, you have really have ideas of, well, yeah, even knight to c6 um, plans are at a certain point possible, you know. So this is a pretty, pretty um, strong move. And here black decided to play the move king a8, just going out of the... Um, yeah, I take off the queen, but white just simply played queen a3 and has no plans of um, rook to a5 and rook takes a6 check. So now there are even rook sacrifices uh, in the air, you know. And here black played a mistake, he played the move c6. And I mean, of course, at the first glance, this looks absolutely logic because it just simply um, yeah, bolsters the d5 square and it looks like a solid move, but it really has some downsides and I will show you the downsides soon enough, but before I just want to show you what is, was a better move for black. And a better move for black would have been probably knight e takes g4. I mean, the position was already pretty tough, uh, don't get me wrong, you know, but I mean, I guess this, this is the best variation black could hope for. Because after f takes g4, um, knight takes g4 check, king e2, knight takes e3, king d2. Don't make the mistake, don't take it with the bishop because then uh, black suddenly better because after queen to h3 he's uh, taking the bishop on e3 uh, two times and let's say knight to c2 and d4, well, your white's position is absolutely um, horrible and black is going to win the game. So you really have to step aside with your king and after queen g4 attacking uh, the bishop on f4, bishop takes e3, queen to g2 check, 
knight to e2, d4, and bishop takes d4, queen takes e2, and king c3, and rook c to d8, and queen to a4. We reach a position where white should be better. I mean, he's up a, a bishop for two pawns, and even if it's king um, doesn't look too good at the moment, I think um, black has no way to further increase the pressure on white's king, and so with best defense he should be able to bring his king to safety and then at a certain point his um, minor piece um, will win the game for him so yeah this is an interesting line another interesting line would have been knight takes f3 and if you want to know more about this variation i would advise you to check out my leech study i will put the link down below in the video description it's all free you just have to click it and then you can play through the moves you will also find other games i analyzed in the jababa run system in the study so just check it out and if you like the study and if you're a leeches member just don't forget to help, click the help button in the study so that other people get the chance to see the study as well you know anyway in the game, Black played the logical and understandable move c6, but this is actually a mistake and I would advise you to pause the video and try to figure out what White's best move is in this position. I'll give you three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you have found the solution. If not, I'll give you a little hint. I've talked about Rook sacrifices probably the entire um, game. So at a certain point, you really have to sacrifice the Rook. Because why should I talk you all game about rook sacrifices if you don't have to sacrifice the rook right? So yeah, I give you another three seconds to pause the video if you need to. One, two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. The right move is bishop takes e5. And after rook takes e5, rook takes e6. I just want to mention that in this position, rook a5 is another strong move. So if you thought about rook to a5, Ah, there's not, absolutely nothing wrong with the move. You're still threatening uh, bishop takes e5, and after he recaptures, then you could simply just um, grab the e a6 pawn. And this is also pretty, pretty brutal. You could turn on the engine and check it for yourself. Um, I will focus on the bishop takes e5, rook takes e5, and rook takes c6 line. Before we come to this line, I just want to mention briefly that in the game, White decided to play the move knight to c6. And this move looks good as well at the first glance, but Black has a good defense. In the game, Black didn't found a good uh, defense. He played the move b takes c6, and this just simply loses immediately because after queen takes a6, check, king b8, rook 1 to c3 with the idea of swinging over, queen to d6, and Queen to b6 check, well, yeah, I mean, black just simply resigned because he has to play king to a8 and then there's a mate. So this is a pretty, pretty bad line for black, but instead he could have played rook takes c6. Because after rook takes c6, b takes c6, queen takes a6, king b8, the position is already pretty tough. I mean, at the first glance, you would think, okay, let's bring our rook to c3 and swing over, but this is actually not that good because after d4 and rook to b3 check, black has a defending resource of rook to b5. And yeah, this actually really saves the day for black because after the exchange of rooks, it's suddenly black who's just simply better. He's up a piece, you know? So there are no more attacking chances for white, and this position is actually one for black. So this is not an option. But uh, in this position, white could have played the move uh, rook takes c6, rook to e6, and queen to b6, king a8, rook takes e6, and the exchange of queens. This is a position that, is, that isn't that clear, you know? I mean, white got three pawns for the knight, and this is probably playable. The computer gives it even as a little bit better for white, but to be totally honest, I wouldn't put too much time into this position because, let's face it, why going for this troublesome line if I just simply could sacrifice a rook, right? And yeah, this position is critical for black. I mean, what can you do? Let's say he takes with the pawn. Well, we just simply say, uh, check on a6 and now black has a decision. He could um, go king to b8 or queen to a7, 
but those are losing let's say king to b8 well just simply um, rook to c3 swinging over you know and there aren't much moves left for um, uh, for black let's say he plays rook to c7 with the idea of bringing the rook uh, in between you just simply play um, rook to b3 check and after rook b7 you can grab the pawn on c6 with check and yeah i mean this is just simply game over and yeah so this doesn't help and if you're not sure about this position just try to find a way for black there is no way it's already white who's clearly winning so a better move would probably be queen to a7 but uh, how can this be better if you just simply grab the rook and i mean come on you just simply win a queen you know and so yeah taking with the pawn is no option for black so he has to take it back with the rook and here you just simply grab it again with the rook and now b takes c6 is again forbidden because of knight takes c6 check and yeah this position is clearly one for white i mean you're up two pawns no even up three pawns i mean there's no way black can do anything about this position i mean it's just simply one for uh, for white so yeah in this position black's best move would actually be to play rook to e8 and after you just simply retreat with your rook to c5 we can stop our analyze we have a pawn we still have active pieces and i don't see why this position shouldn't be better for white you know i mean of course it's still some play left you're only up one pawn but um, the computer gives it as roughly plus two for white and i have to agree that this is a great position for white and with best play of course it's only white who can win the position right so yeah i hope you liked today's video i hope you learned something and if you did please let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so see you next time and it's again time to checkmate